Hey, what's up? My name is Adam McWilliams, and this is my project on Rubik's Cubes. I first got into Rubik's Cubes several years ago, but now that I knew the basics, I keep looking for more challenges. The Rubik's Cube was invented by this guy. His name is Erno Rubik. He was born in Budapest, Hungary, and he was an architecture professor. The cube was invented in 1974, and he used it as a model for his class. It came to America in 1980 and was an instant hit. In that same year, the cube was awarded Toy of the Year and became a worldwide phenomenon. 3x3 was the original cube, and when it was first made, the creator did not even know how to solve it. He tried to work on it for about a month before he decided it was just too hard. That's when he went on to create the 2x2. He quickly figured this out, it took about a week, and with the algorithms he learned from the 2x2, he was able to solve the 3x3. Alternate versions of the cube have been created over the years, including the 2x2, 3x3, 4x4, 5x5, 6x6, and 7x7. Now the 6x6 and 7x7 are created by a different company that creates products called V-Cubes. The V-Cube company also makes a 5x5 and their cubes are called the V-Cube 5, 6, and 7. The inventor is from Greece and his goal was to create a puzzle cube as they are called with more than 5 layers. At this point they are still working on technology for cubes with more than 7 layers. The 3x3 cube is made up of 3 different kinds of pieces. There are 12 edge pieces, which are the middle pieces on the edge. There are 8 corners, which are the 8 corners of the cube. And then there are 6 centers, one on each side. The centers are all connected together by the core, which is the plastic mechanical device that allows all of the pieces to move around each other. Another thing that you need to know is that you do not solve the cube one side at a time. I'm sure it's possible, but it's a lot more complicated and it'll take a lot more time. What most people do is solve it by layers. That means that you solve one side and arrange all the colors adjacent to it. The first step is to solve a cross on the first layer, and then you will place each corner in the correct position. When you finish the first layer, then you are ready to start on the second layer, which is when you need to start using algorithms. The third layer is all algorithms, so we'll just get to that later. There are a few things that you need to know before you attempt to solve a Rubik's Cube. The first thing is that each side has only one center and it never changes position no matter what you do to turn the cube. Another piece of information that you may need to know is that there are certain algorithms that you need to learn so that once you solve one part of the cube, you don't mess it up whenever you try to solve another part. There is a special notation that is used to identify algorithms and it applies as follows. When referring to a certain move or turn, you must hold the cube so that one side is facing you. This is the F or front face, the back is the B face. R is the right face, L is left, U is up or top face, D is down or bottom. When you see only a single letter, it means to turn that face clockwise. When a letter is followed by a lowercase i, it means to turn that face counterclockwise. The lowercase i means an inverted or opposite turn. One of the most important algorithms that you will need to learn is the algorithm R-I-D-I-R-D, -I -I or right inverted, down inverted, right down. You will use this algorithm more than any other algorithm you will ever use when solving a Rubik's Cube. There are a few more that you need to know, but I don't have enough time to go over them with you at this time. So I've taught you most of what I know about Rubik's Cubes, and hopefully you'll check out some videos, and with enough practice, maybe someday you can be a master like me.